All right, let's get to the draft. The best dual sport athletes, football and baseball edition. I'll give you the first pick as an early birthday gift. Thank you very much. It's very early. I'll just give you that clue. Uh, whoa, Bo Jackson. Whoa. Bo Jackson. It's got to be the first pick, right? I mean, he's the only person who has ever been an all-star in both baseball and in football pro bowler. That's what we decide to call it over here uh, in the NFL. So he's great, right? And the funny thing is, that I think people probably my age or younger probably don't quite know how good Bo Jackson is, but I have a very good mother who did a good job of raising me. So I know just how good Bo Jackson was. And the funny thing too is, I don't remember, I know if you remember this, Mike, a few years ago, Adam LaRoche's kid at uh, spring training for the White Sox was basically going up to Bo Jackson asking, who are you? And like, what are you, what do you do? Like, why are you here? And then Bo Jackson had to be like, uh, kid, <laughs> let me tell you a little bit of something about me. So people, more people should know who Bo Jackson is, who I think are my age and younger, because he is one of the best two sport athletes ever. Bo Jackson was a phenomenon. The Bo Knows Bo book, the Bo Knows commercials for Nike. They're still available on YouTube. They're hilarious. His performance in, I think it was the 89 All-Star game. Was it 89? The year that uh, he had, yeah. 89, 89 All-Star yeah. game. And just some of the things he did over the course of his baseball career were uncanny. Breaking the bat over his knee, breaking the bat over his helmet. I remember a time where he caught a foul ball in the stands and a guy tried to tag up from third base and he threw him out after he pulled himself out of the stands. I mean, just amazing uh, what the guy could do. And it's a shame, you know, we, we accept the fact that football players are going to be injured. When his career ended because of that freak hip injury in a playoff game against the Bengals, I, 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 I remember that was like, that hurt. You understand guys are going to get hurt, and there's always going to be somebody else, and you do get desensitized to it. That one hurt because of what might have been from Bo Jackson. Deion Sanders, for me, even though he wasn't a great baseball player, he was able to play at the major league level, played in a World Series game. I was at the game, Miles. October 10, 1992, when he came from Atlanta to Pittsburgh and played in the Sunday night game for the Braves against the Pirates in the NLCS that year. I had just turned one. There's another clue for you. Uh, Deion Ooh. Sanders, obviously, uh, obviously, I think when we're talking about guys who have been good in both sports or even just played both sports, he's one of the best to probably ever do it because even if he's just, you know, an average Major League Baseball player, he didn't lead the league in triples one year with 14, which is ridiculous because he did it, I think, in 97 games. That's not something that you should be able to do, and I think it just shows off his speed and athleticism. So he was awesome. Uh, next guy I would have to go with Brian Jordan because even though he well wasn't done. playing in both leagues at the same time, he was still able to do it. He goes from being a safety um, in the NFL, played for the Falcons, and then he goes to Major League Baseball and has a long career, goes from 1992 to 2006, I believe. So, look, at somebody, we were talking about a hell of an athlete. He's a hell of an athlete. You can't just, I think, uh, downplay anybody that can be a professional and start games and be as good as he was in both leagues like that. All-star in 1999. Yeah, awesome choice. That's a name that's not remembered much because it was in that Deion Sanders era, and it's like all of a sudden Brian Jordan says, see you later, football. I'm going to play for the Cardinals, and he had a nice baseball career. I'll go Kyler Murray, even though he hasn't played Major League Baseball yet. The fact that he was a top-10 pick in the MLB draft, which has like 283 rounds, the fact that he was regarded and still is so highly by baseball. Remember, it wasn't that long ago, he's at the Phoenix Suns game with the Oakland A's hat on, and and, and yeah, I like the fact that he is the rare NFL player who has the ability to say, if I don't play football, I can still go play another professional sport and make as much money. And that's going to be some interesting leverage when the time comes for him to negotiate his second contract. And I also can't help but wonder how much losing he will tolerate before he says, maybe I'll go try something else. And he's got the skill to do it. And you can't help but wonder whether with that level of skill, he doesn't want to go do it at some point. Is it pulling him away from football? A couple of others real quickly before we take a break. John Elway, obviously, was a great baseball player. Jeff Samarja would have been a first-round pick at receiver coming out of Notre Dame. He had a very good career, made more money than Calvin Johnson, frankly, and would have been drafted in about the same era a couple years after that. And also, i got to mention this guy because he was taken in the 17th and final round of the 1973 draft by the Minnesota Vikings, the same draft 
that brought them Chuck Foreman in round one. I had that awesome Chuck Foreman hoodie on yesterday. Round 17, do you know who it was? The baseball player who was taken by the Vikings that year, Miles. Do you know? Do you know? I have no idea. Uh, you stumped me. Dave Winfield. Dave Winfield. He was drafted oh. football, baseball, basketball, and he never played football. And the Vikings drafted him in round 17.